Ladies and gents, today I'm going to teach you almost all you need to know about dividend investing. First, I'm going to start out with why you should be focusing on dividends. Now, I don't believe that it should be a single strategy of investing. For myself personally, as an individual investor, I like to bounce between many different styles of investing in order to use the most effective strategy at each part of the market conditions or economic conditions or investment investing conditions. So I like to bounce between many different strategies like dividend investing is one of them, but also options selling, um, options spreads selling, you know, sometimes options buying, basically options trading, um, swing trading. Um, there is a strategy that I'm going to discuss today called dividend capture. I uh, haven't done that in a while, but it's, it's there. You know, resource sector cycle investing. There are many different ways to make money in the markets. Tons of them. Uh, I try to bounce between about six or seven different styles, but this is one of them. I'm, and I'm just going to focus on the dividend investing. The reason why I like it the most is because it's ever present. It's one where it doesn't matter what the conditions are. This strategy always works, especially if you do well. It's difficult to do well. But I'll try to give you some starting pointers here, okay? So the number one reason why you want to do dividend investing is because it's one of the very few predictable investments that you can have. For example, if you pick a dividend payer to buy, that is a dividend, it is a, a dividend aristocrat, which is basically a company that's been increasing dividends every year for about 25 years or more, then you know, it's very likely that your dividend will be safe for years and years to come. And you will never have to really look at it. It's kind of like buy, set it and forget it type of deal and just enjoy your money. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, usually, these type of companies pay more of a dividend or at least grow in value more than bonds would. So if it's a toss up between buying bonds or aristocrats, I will choose the dividend pairs every time, especially since bonds fluctuate and we just came out of an era of 10 years where bonds were paying basically nothing. Now things have shifted a little bit and bonds have a yield, especially short term uh, notes and bills. They're paying really well, but that's a topic for a different video. What exactly is a dividend? Well, here, I'm going to explain with these cards here. All right. Let's say we have a business. And that businessman, uh, that business makes $10,000 this year. Okay, each one of these S logos, this is my logo, <laughs> represents $1,000. If I decide to distribute that profit from the business to all of the five owners of our business, then I would just give two of these cards, you know, per owner, right? Two grand for each owner. All right. 10 divided by two. And now at the end of the year, we've distributed all of the money to, did I miscount? <laughs> okay, 10. We'll distribute all the money to the owners in the form of a dividend. That's basically what it is. It's kind of like profit sharing. There's a lot more nuance to it than that, but the basic simplest explanation is this. Now, dividends can be paid. The reason I say that is because dividends can actually be paid um, out of debt. I mean, you can, let's say my owners of the company, of the owners of the company that, that we own here, they're used to getting their $2,000 per year. And so they kind of demand it, but this year, the business hasn't done that well. It only made 8000 So they might choose to take out a $2,000 loan in order to cover everybody's $2,000 dividend, $2,000 dividend. Companies do stuff like that all the time, especially when financing is cheap. But that's not even the only financial trickery out there. So you'd have to be pretty savvy and suave in the financial world in order to maneuver correctly. So I'm here to try to give you some of these tips and tricks and to try to help you at least think about some of these issues as we move along here so you don't get trapped into making a bad investment and losing 
a large portion of your principal or all of it. Investing is very tough, okay? No matter what people tell you, it's tough, it's tricky. Even for a super passive strategy like dividend investing, there's a lot of things that you need to know. Okay, so how often do companies pay dividends? Well, the standard duration of time is quarterly. Most companies do their books quarterly, and so they pay out the dividend at that time. So that's the standard. However, some companies break it up into a 12-month uh, paying schedule and I really enjoy those. I don't think it really matters uh, from a compa- compounding standpoint because I think they just decide what the dividend is going to be for the next three months and then just pay it out over the course of those months instead of just giving it giving it to you all at once up front, which I think, you know, it's obviously the preferred version, but Having a monthly dividend sounds nice and it's very practical for people who want to be hands off. And I personally prefer it uh, because it keeps me motivated when I see that dividend coming in every single month instead of waiting three whole months to see any kind of money from this company. So there are also, by the way, yearly payers and bi-yearly payers. So every six months. Normally... The dividends that come from companies abroad are either bi-yearly or yearly dividends, uh, mostly because it's probably very difficult to do all the paperwork all the time for, you know, um, U.S. investors as well as their local investors, etc. And so companies that trade through an ADR, an American Depository um, Receipt, foreign companies, they have probably a longer schedule for payments so keep track of that so if you own like an oil company abroad or some kind of bank in spain or whatever or in brazil um sorry i don't mean to laugh but i'm just trying to make up random examples um then you will see that money uh, probably once every year now i know what you're thinking why can't i just buy the company like three days before the ex-dividend date um, when they're going to pay out the dividend and then sell it right afterwards. And that doesn't necessarily work out like that. Okay, We'll get into it when we talk about dividend capture. Next, how do I choose a dividend investment? Okay, so, I mean, that's the, that's the toughest part, isn't it? So you need a, you need a company that's got... Um, big dividend but you also don't want it you don't want to lose it over time most of the companies that have a big dividend let's say over six or eight percent they tend to lose principal over time because six and eight six to eight percent is very difficult to achieve or let alone higher than that it's possible but very difficult So, tons of companies that pay those kinds of dividends of over 8%, they lose principal over time, and in order to make those dividends, they'll do some kind of financial trickery, right? They'll get the money out of somewhere to pay the dividends to look good as an investment, but they actually, you know, go into debt doing it, or they lose some kind of capital to try to maneuver their way, and savvy investors, usually that are employed by big banks and investment banks, big big investment banks, or you know, that have tons of analysts that look into the stuff on the daily, they will start selling off that company or that fund. So it's not it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, one way to weave some of these investors out is to look for dividend aristocrats. Okay, so dividend aristocrats, like I mentioned, are companies that have paid an increased dividend every year for a very, very long time. So we can actually take a look at some dividend aristocrats right here. There's a lot of free resources on the web. You can see that um, here, the companies are listed by sector, years of dividend growth, and the current dividend yield as of February 9th. 3M, for example, has increased dividends for oh, for 64 years. Every year they increase dividends. Yet, the yield is 3.7. That means that there's probably been a lot of price appreciation. I'm not for certain. 
Um, let's go into, I, I use Robinhood for my public account. So don't judge, don't sleep on Robinhood Gold, okay? There's plenty of value there, but we're gonna look at 3M. Yeah, I know a lot of you are gonna switch off the video right here, just because I'm using Robinhood, but. So I think this is, uh, is this 3M? Yeah, I think so. Well, we should probably, we should have not looked at this company. Let's look at it on Google. Maybe you'll give us uh, a better information. So Max, and there we go. Lots of pr uh, price appreciation. All right, it's 106 now. It was as high as 245, 2018, crazy. But you can see that from inception, you know, it's had a lot of price appreciation. 47, 50, 75, 80, 90, you know, 100, etc. So over the years, because they keep increasing the dividend over and over, um, they appreciate in price. So it's hard to get that initial yield at a very high value. So many of these companies, 50 years, Abbott Laboratories, um, Avi is a fan favorite in the healthcare sector with a 4.5%. Look at this. That pays well. 4.5% is decent, especially if uh, treasury rates decrease. If bond yields decrease, then people are going to be flocking to get any kind of secure 4.5% yield in a more disinflationary period than we have right now. Um, materials, 4.2. This is very rare to have a you know, materials companies increase dividend and, and it's this high, 4.2. Look at this, 0.7, 2.6. Let's scroll down. Energy, Chevron, of course. 35 years of increasing dividend. That's not bad. Should have bought Chevron back down in the depths of 2008. Had a chance to buy some old companies. I thought of going all in. Didn't do it. Look at this one, Exxon Mobil. There you go, 4.3% dividend, increased for 38 years. You wouldn't think about it from an oil company. Um, IBM, amazingly, IBM 4.8, that's huge, 4.8, 26 years. Johnson & Johnson, 60 years, craziness. All right, Kimberly Clark, 49 years, 3.5 yield. These are pretty good. And this is the one I own right here, Realty Income or ticker symbol O in the real estate. It operates, I believe, as, as a, a, a REIT under that formation. No, no, and, and they massage the numbers, so they get preferential tax treatment uh, of over 90% of your profit being distributed. And um, they get a tax advantage doing that, so REITs do. They, they're they really good at what they do, basically. It's 4.4% 4. yield at the moment. I think it's actually a little bit higher than this, what it's listed here. Uh, this is in February, so it's a little outdated. I think it's like 4.8 or 4.9 at the moment. So I'm trying to buy as much as that as I can. Uh, if we go back to the account, you'll see my holdings here on the right. So I have 488 shares getting reinvested every month directly through a DRIP, direct reinvestment plan. And um, also the other one I hold is Main Street Capital. These are just just trial balloons here. I usually have three main positions as of late. Apple, Realty Income, and Main Street Capital. And I have some cash right now waiting on the sidelines for some kind of a market event that I can capitalize. But my account is a different... My This is my public account here. It's a different story. Um, if you're interested in all that and you, you this is the first video you see from me, I do uh, account reviews every so often to try to update everybody on what's going on. I've been making episodes for this account for like four over four years and uh, I have over 500 episodes if you want to check those well actually it's under 500 a little bit so moving on these are dividend aristocrats so that's one way okay you can make sure that at least you have the history is um, past performance guaranteeing future result no that's the oldest saying in finance right it's not guaranteed but if I look in the past, I can kind of extrapolate what's going to happen in the future. And um, that's really, really helpful when you're looking for safety. I can sleep well holding Main Street Capital 
and Realty Income. You know, they're, they've been holding their dividends strong for many years and they've increased every year, even through really tough times. Realty Income has increased their dividend through the uh, real estate crisis. So that's saying a lot, being in real estate themselves. It's very important. All right. Pitfalls. Okay, pitfalls to watch for. Don't buy really high yield companies and funds without really doing thorough investigation. I'm always suspicious when there's like a 10% yield, 20% yield, 30% yield on a company. And then I see, and perhaps sometimes it's a one time big payout and everything looks fantastic, but then they're just going to go down to paying almost no dividend. Right. Also other times, especially if you see a high dividend and a decreasing principal, meaning the price of the stock or the fund over longer periods of time, like five years or something like that. Like, let's take a look at, um, I was looking at IBM actually, it's, it kind of intrigued me. So I was doing a little research on IBM. So these are basically their dividend payouts here. They had big boosts since 2014, 15. And these boosts have been very slow ever since, but they're still they're increasing every year. They don't want to lose that dividend aristocrat status. So their dividend growth is only 0.61 at the moment, where they've had periods of 20% growth. Um, so I was looking at this company, SL Green, SLG, and you know this is what their dividend payouts look like. They're the office REIT, right? So they took a big cut here, 2020, right? March 2020, from 0.9 to 0.3. Okay, now it's it keeps decreasing at 0.2. So anytime you can have some kind of an event that really cuts uh, the ability of the fund to pay out these huge dividends. But this is not even the most egregious example. I mean, there are examples that are all over the place. Like for example, uh, what's a good one here? All right, if you go in here, I was looking at some monthly dividend stocks. Like I said, these are all websites that are free. You can go on the internet and research them themselves. Like, what do you think about ALPS at the moment? I haven't looked it up, but look at his dividend, right? 52.51, you guys think that's sustainable? If this was sustainable, then every single person would have their money into this into this fund. So let's see what Alps is all about. ALPS. A L P S. Okay, first of all it's 0 0.7 the price of the, the stock. Let's see how the there you go. This is the price over the last five years or since 2022. Look at this drop from five dollars to seventy cents. So it lost 80% of its value or more just like this. So it doesn't matter how much the dividend's paying, if you're losing your principal, <laughs> that's not good. You wanna you wanna make sure you keep that principal. So here's their dividend payouts. Look, they're paying out three cents. Okay, fantastic. Right? And then look, boom. They increase it to point zero three two but there's got to be a reason right why would this dividend payer go all the way down from five to point seven so there's something wrong right something wrong i don't have time to research it right now obviously whatever they're doing is probably unsustainable it looks like the figures are incredible by the way so far but the market always knows something we don't otherwise we'll be sitting on a gold mine here right they are issuing shares for some reason. So I, I haven't done any research on the company, but what I'm trying to say is um, that there are plenty of companies that look way too attractive. And the rule is, if it looks too good to be true, it's probably untrue. <laughs> this, comp this, this website attempts to do a, a little bit of a dividend safety rating. It says unsafe, very unsafe, etc. And if you go down further in the list, I'm not saying that you should totally trust these, but I found it really odd that the two uh, funds 
that I have invested in, Main Street Capital, is considered to be one of the only safe ones here. And the next one, right, Realty, Realty Income, is also considered safe by the standards. And the other one is a very popular one, ADC, Agree Realty. All right, it's also considered safe. So there's, it's no accident that these companies um, are considered safe. Sorry, I didn't have the browser clicked in. Okay, so there's Realty Income, Agree Realty, and then this is Main Street Capital. The rest of it, as you can see, is either unsafe or borderline or whatever, or very unsafe. But you you know you have to do individual research on all these. How about we try real quick to go ARR? We'll go here. ARR. And then we'll go to the dividends and see what's going on there. The and so it looks like they decreased their dividend as of recent. They've been decreasing the rear dividend. Look how big it was way back when. So in 2013, it used to be 56 cents. Now it's down to 8 cents. Okay, so this dividend keeps dropping, right? So we, that's a worrying trend. And if we look at the stock price of this fund, it's probably going to be a similar story. So there you go. Is this what you want to invest in for the long run? Let me see. So it used to be worth sixty-one dollars. Now it's five. You know, back in two thousand and eleven. You don't want. Doesn't matter. I don't care how high of a dividend you're paying. If you're losing the principal, it's not worth investing in, even if your dividend is twenty-two percent. So you have to watch out for these pitfalls. Make sure that you research. You know how it's traveling all over a decade or more. The price and the dividend. How it's tracking because those numbers don't lie right if there's if there's trouble with the company or the way they finance the dividends then uh you know you need to look you need to look elsewhere all right either you do a supremely deep investigation and you must be an expert when you go into all the properties and exactly how they're maneuvering the money around or you just ditch it and find something else because you're going to be losing a lot of money all right, so please be careful with, with, with the uh, pitfalls of dividend investing. It's not that simple to find a good investment. I wouldn't suggest necessarily copying what I've got. I mean, any of the dividend aristocrats would probably do just fine when it comes to safety. Um, you know, but you're going to have to do your own research and homework and uh, perhaps even talk to a professional about some good picks. Pay pay financial advisors by the hour, right? Don't give them don't give them don't hand them your your money to manage. How long should I hold my investment? Well, the, the simple answer is as long as possible, especially if you got the drip going on. So drip, like I mentioned, direct reinvestment. So what that does is as soon as you receive the the dividend, it gets automatically reinvested into more shares of that same investment. That's what I have going on with Main Street Capital and Realty Income right now. So the longer, the uh, the better. If you want, you can pull the money to try to make a big cut or a different investment, but I think it's not as cost effective uh, because then you have money sitting in the brokerage account not doing anything, whereas you could be collecting a dividend. Right now, it's not a big deal to call it a new brokerage account because brokerage account, in my case, pays, for, pays, pays, pays 4.4% yield. That is why I have some cash in the brokerage account. That's why, by the way, one of the main reasons why I think Robinhood Gold, Gold is a good deal because no other brokerage is going to give you 4.4% on your money. So compounding yield, okay? So the more you hold that dividend investor, the more you reinvest, the more it compounds, the more it grows. And there are plenty of compound investment calculators out there that are free on the internet. Just Google one. And you can type in, you know, your cost basis. I did a, a, um, a video on my most recent dividend payment of like $353 or so. And I did a breakdown over what it would look like if I reinvested for the next 20 years and where I'd be. And so the numbers that came back were pretty interesting. So I suggest you, you do the same with your investments. The key is to not touch it and just to have it reinvest and perhaps even add money 
over the years, even if it's just a little bit, the results, the difference in results is mind blowing. So play with those calculators and figure that stuff out. I believe that you're smart enough. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. Not that, not that brilliant. So I talked about DRIP, um, direct reinvesting. So next, what is dividend capture? Okay, it's time to talk about dividend capture. So there's this thing called the ex-dividend date. Ex-dividend date is the date before you need to make sure that you own the stock in question or the fund in question um, in order to get paid the dividend that's coming up. That's what an ex-dividend date is. So what a dividend capture is, is people who go and just buy the stock right before the ex-dividend day and um, and then they try to sell it, you know, right afterwards just to get the dividend. That does happen. People do it. But what I want to caution anyone who's doing that is that this specific movement is continuously priced in to the price of the option by investors, by other investors. Okay. So it's treated basically kind of like um, a contract. Okay. With an expiration date, which is the time at which you deliver the dividend is delivered. So um, if you hold a company now, right. And you know, the company is going to be worth basically an X amount less and you're going to have that X amount in your pocket at that date, then you can trade having that knowledge, right? You can trade having that knowledge and people will trade around that, right? They will, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it kind of serves like a, like a, like a theta decay basically in a sense for the option and so its price continuously changes up into that event so it's kind of hard to the dividend capture and get away with it by buying and selling the the stock at similar price before and after the event so just keep keep that in mind when you when you want to dividend capture should you do it sure i mean if you can get good at anything if you get really good at that and the entry and exits uh of the whole situation then Go for it. I know some people do that and have done okay. How diversified should you be with your dividend companies? Well, it's that's a very personal question, right? Um, but to me, if I could own, you know, realty income and Main Street Capital, I mean, maybe I was looking at STAG as well, S-T-A-G, um, but just a few companies is good enough for me because why would I want to, because if I think these companies are really safe, if I think that the companies I own, let's say five of them, two or five are extremely safe, then why would I want to invest in something that I think is unsafe? Right? So the, the, the benefit of safety that I get from diversification will be negated by the companies I'm diversifying with. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't make much sense to me because the reason why you diversify is so you gain safety in numbers, right? Um, so if you do less homework, if you know less, if, if the companies are, are less safe and less reliable, then that effect is completely negated. In fact, in some cases, it may be reversed. So that's what I think about diversifying your dividend stocks. If you manage to do enough homework on all of them, then yes, it can serve as a very good tool. Um, do I think you should be diversified between asset class and all that? I mean, sure. Yeah, it just depends on how much risk you want to take versus, you know, how much reward you're planning on cashing in on. Um, obviously, you want to find an intersection somewhere between all that. You want to make a lot of cash safely, <laughs> but that is, <laughs> that's much easier said than done, right? It just sounds really easy, but <laughs> that's the entire game finance. That's the game that we all play. Right. Everyone's looking for that holy grail. So if it was very simple answer, then everybody would float. Everybody would run to that side of the boat. Okay, and we get super crowded, right? If energy stocks were the way to go and everybody's like, oh, no, energy. Yeah, of course. Duh. 
then everybody would be over that. There wouldn't be any other options. <laughs> okay. So there's obviously some kind of risk. There's risk of cyclicality. There's risk of, uh, you know, mismanagement. There's risk of everything out there. Currency risks, like yield risk, right? You got economy risk. All kinds of risk. Market risk. So if you have any questions about what I've said today, you want me to shed some more light on this particular style of investing. You know, it's very popular among um, this group of people here. Right? The fire movement. It's very popular there. But if you have any questions, right? Um, because it's very calculated. It's very predictable. Please let me know in the comments below. Or if you think I got something wrong, I'd like to learn too. I'm an individual investor just like you. I'm not a RIA. I'm not a registered investment advisor. Okay. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an FA. I'm not a CPA. Okay. I'm not any of those names. And I'm, I'm not a MBA, PhD, CFA. Okay. So just an investor, individual just like you that's happened to be around in the markets for like 20 years. And hopefully I learned a thing or two. So I'm just trying to share with everybody on my own journey that this channel was entirely created with the purpose initially of journaling. So I wanted to journal my journey and figure out like I want to go back in time and be able to rewatch something and see how did I, what was my mental state at a specific point in time, etc. Like what did I find out? What did I learn about myself, etc.? But as time went on, I figured, you know what, I should probably um, share more than just my thoughts, but share what I've learned as, as I go here. And perhaps others will be able to notice the pitfalls in my thinking. And maybe I can learn something from you, you know. So if you think that I could benefit from something, do it. Maybe you've watched another video of mine or something like that. You think I'm, I'm wrong about something. Please let me know. I'm totally open to criticism. Um, and also, like I said, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, the, the resources that I use, you know, my favorite website is stockanalysis.com. Um, I haven't found a good dividend resource because each dividend resource has its own quirk. And um, it's hard to navigate and only gives me partial information. I've yet to see a website that's up to date that says everything about the company when it comes to like its dividend payouts, etc., and look nice and neat so if you know a website like that i would like to know about it so i can use it okay this became a longer video than i thought hopefully you got something out of it um that's it mic drop